You know what, folks? I'm really getting sick and tired of the immorality that has infected so many people today. It is horrendous, the amount of atrocities that people have committed. I really have to question the position of the average person. No more guessing. You've all seen the title of this presentation. Do you know what aquamation is? How about biocremation? How about flameless cremation? Resumation? Water cremation? How about dumping liquefied human bodies down the sewer? You heard of that one? You know, there are famous horror writers who try to come up with stuff that doesn't even come close to the horrors of reality. Who? What? Why? There is no science you can explain to me to get me to understand or go along with such a thing. There are some things that are just sacred. We have very few of those things left today. God dog it. That water gets filtered and treated back into our pipes and the leftover sludge gets sold as fertilizer. Yuck. You wonder who's getting showered on you today. Old Jackson died at the age of 78 and he is now all over everybody. Welcome to the age of madness. My goodness, there is no escape, is there? This is a truly disgusting civilization. Who disagrees? How do we remedy this? How do we purge this disease, this sickness? So take a look at this. Wisconsin State Senate approves water cremation for human use. Bill allows dead bodies to be dissolved with lye poured into the sewer, the proposal opposed by Wisconsin's five Catholic bishops now goes to the state assembly. I mean, do I really have to keep reading? There it is. This is what they used to do it. The aquamation system by Indiana-based Bioresponse Solutions uses water and caustic chemicals to reduce the human body to an effluent that is washed into the sewer system. All that remains are bones, which are then pulverized and placed into an urn. So here's what the article states. Alkaline hydrolysis uses water, heat, pressure, and the chemical agent lye to dissolve the human body. Lye, also known as caustic soda, is used in various industrial applications such as soap making and as a drain cleaner. The technology has been widely used in Europe to dispose of cattle that died from mad cow disease. The first human used in the United States was by medical schools to dispose of cadavers used in laboratory instruction. In the funeral industry, alkaline hydrolysis uses a tube-shaped vat to dissolve the body. The machine is filled with around 100 gallons of water, along with the lye. The water is heated to 204 to 302 degrees and the chamber is subjected to pressure to speed the process. Depending on the temperature and pressure used, dissolution can take as little as 5 to 6 hours and as much as 14 hours, according to Bioresponse Solutions, an Indiana company that markets what it calls an aquamation system. The body's tissues are reduced to an effluent or slurry likened to the consistency of motor oil. The solution is discharged into the wastewater treatment system. The bones left behind are then pulverized into powder and returned to the family in a manner similar to remains from combustion cremation. 
The article goes on about the Catholic Church. Verkaterin said alkaline hydrolysis is an aberration from the traditional treatment of human remains because most of the remains go down the sewer. The Senate bill exempts the sterile liquid byproduct of AH from being classified as cremated remains. This liquid is not considered part of the cremated remains, though it includes all the organic matter that makes up a human person, she said. Senate Bill 228 treats much of the deceased as waste, not cremated remains under the law. So there you have it. They are doing it. This is what mankind has come to. Now I want you all to think about this for a moment. We have all these people that pass away due to viruses and those people's bodies may be processed in this manner. Regardless of the cause of death, where do those remains end up? Just in the sewer? Well, let's see. How many of you know about how a waste treatment facility works? Since Wisconsin is approving this, we'll use Milwaukee's Veolia treatment facility as an example. This facility treats billions of gallons of water every year for about 28 communities and over 1 million people in southeast Wisconsin. There are two plants there, Jones Island and South Shore. They cover 411 square miles of the district. Now, on a dry day, they can treat 150 million gallons of water for that day. But if it rains, then they can treat about 600 million gallons in that day. Now, of course, you do know that during a heavy rain, if the two plants cannot handle the overflow, then the water gets backed up in the sewer and ends up in the basements of people's homes. Under the ground, there are about 29 miles of deep sewer tunnels that can hold up to 521 gallons of water. So the sewer water gets pumped into the two plants. The sewer water is then brought up from underground with an Archimedes screw-like structure into a plant where it is screened for big trash like bags, bottles, flushable wipes, things like that. The water enters these tanks that spin the water using a centrifugal force to separate the smaller sand and grit particles. And then the water is sent to clarifiers, which are huge open vats with a rotating arm at the top. This helps small particles to settle at the bottom while the oily, sludgy particles rise to the top. The rotating arm scrapes the surface of the water, it takes about an hour, to remove the oils, some of the oils, not all of the oils, some of the oils and nasty stuff, while the sludge that settled on the bottom is sucked out from underneath the vat and pumps 12 miles to some anaerobic digester tanks. By the way, they are able to use the gases that come off of that sludge to help fuel the plant. Let that sink in. Now that the heavy sludge is removed from the water, the water then undergoes biological treatment. In other words, that water has natural bugs and microorganisms in it. They pump oxygen into the water to encourage those bugs to multiply and eat the inorganic material floating around in the water. The new produced bugs go and live their life cycle in the aeration tanks and the older bugs settle to the bottom and die. Now the sludge that they've collected in the other facility, that goes into the drying and dewatering facility where the sludge is heated up to 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. What they end up with is called melorganite, which is the fertilizer used to spray golf courses lawns, and home gardens. Now the water, in its final stage of treatment, they use chlorine to sanitize it. And then they pump it back into the lake and 
back into the pipes to be used all over again. So here's the thing. I don't know what people think lye does, but it's basically washing the flesh off the bones. It would be like taking soap and washing off all the skin and washing off all the muscle tissue right down to the bones and letting it all drain into the sewer. Then it gets treated and you get to shower and bathe in that water. You get to spray that water on your garden and use sludge fertilizer on your garden as well. Then when you, your green peppers get harvested, you, you get to eat whatever those peppers were grown in. Oh, and it gets better just in case you can't get your hands on that fertilizer. Don't worry because the sludge is used in commercial farming as well, if not the most. They are recycling people, folks, for our consumption. People. Human beings. This is not a conspiracy theory, folks. This is a fact. There are movies about this crap. Are you kidding me? This is the place we live in. They are liquefying the dead and pumping them through the water system and into the farming industry, which uses both the water and the sludge. Oh yeah, that's not going to cause any problems. I mean, we really need to keep an eye on our own government. They get away with way too much and they have way too much say so in how we live as people. They don't know what's best. They know what's worse. Anyways, I thought I would bring this news to your attention. There is so much madness going on. It is hard to keep up with these evil entities. So stay tuned, everyone. There is more to come. Good Lord, I don't know what we are going to do. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com. There is a new video up called The Experiment, Episode 1. Episode 2 is coming soon. Also, check out the Woodward Entertainment Store. And until next time, as always, stay awake, stay aware, stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.